ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor and pleasure to be here at the uh, NGAP Summit to celebrate the next generation and also the conclusion of the Dream Soar Global Flight. To sum it all up, we did it. <laughs> For those of you who are unfamiliar with Dream Soar, Dream Soar is a nonprofit organization set out to inspire the next generation of STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, and aviation professionals. Phase one of Dream Soar, it was for me uh, the pilot of this aircraft, which is a Beechcraft Bonanza, to fly solo around the world to inspire the next generation of STEM and aviation professionals. On May 13th of this year, I departed uh, from Daytona Beach, Florida to fly a total of 30 stops in 22 countries across five continents by myself to inspire, to bring the message of STEM, aviation, and STEM and aviation education to young children. Although this flight was a solo flight around the world, I had an amazing team on the ground working around the clock to make sure that the fuel, the logistics, the um, airports were all informed of my arrival. And this was very difficult, especially when you factor in the different weather delays uh, around the world, especially in Asia during monsoon Susan, season. And it was just wonderful to have the Dream Team, the Dream Soar Team, work very closely with ICAO and the council members to ensure that the trip around the world with all of its unexpected delays and weather challenges would run as smoothly as possible. One of our biggest partnerships uh, that allowed Dream Soar to successfully fly around the world to inspire the next generation uh, is ICAO. And the heart of ICAO, the heart of those who helped just have me propel forward around the world were the council members uh, who all stepped in and, and chipped in to make sure that uh, we were effectively inspiring the next generation. And boy, was the next generation inspired. This picture was taken here in Montreal during one of the outreach events that was co-hosted by ICAO, ICAO and Stratus Aviation. Around the world, I got to personally meet 3,000 children face to face. 3,000 children from around the world got to see my aircraft up close and hear my story of how I came from a refugee camp in Afghanistan, grew up in a family of six girls, wasn't so good in, in school, but managed to rise above all of that, become a pilot, become a commercial pilot, get a bachelor's and a master's degree, proving to young girls and boys that the odds can be against you, but you can still succeed. As long as you believe in your dreams, you work hard. And any sort of dream, uh, it's rarely accomplished solo. It really does take a team to, to have any dream come true of any individual. I'd like to share with you uh, a quick video that just highlights the different countries uh, that I had the pleasure of visiting. And again, it was through the partnership of ICAO where uh, the council members and the Dream Store team really worked closely together to take advantage of this platform of me flying solo around the world in a plane, taking advantage of that opportunity and sharing it with children and making them feel a part of this global trip around the world. So if I can have your attention for a few minutes just to give you a brief highlight of the trip.
one young woman here who is reaching new heights and inspiring people along the way. So come May, uh, early spring of next year, I'm going to be flying this bonanza around the world. Meet Shasta Ways, and founder and president of Dreams Soar. She's here at base to share her inspirational story of going from a refugee camp to being the first female civilian pilot from Afghanistan. Thank you. So a little bit about the trip. I departed on May 13th from Daytona Beach, Florida in the Beechcraft Bonanza, set out to fly around the world solo, and upon completing the trip, I hold the world record of being the youngest woman to fly solo around the world in a single engine piston-powered aircraft. To do something this courageous, you really have to have a strong purpose for doing uh, something like flying by yourself in a single engine airplane across oceans and just terrain that I've never seen in my life, different weather patterns. To do this, you really have to have a strong purpose. And for me, every time I started the engine and got ready to go land in another country, I kept thinking about those children that I had already met the children who had written to DreamSoar and I about how excited they are that I'm embarking on this journey and thinking about the children that are waiting for me in the countries that lie ahead of me. One of the most remarkable moments on this trip was my first ocean crossing. I took off from St. John's, Canada, Newfoundland, going across the Atlantic Ocean down to the Azores in Portugal. And after nine hours of sitting in my seat and hearing my one little engine running, it dawned on me that in the history of aviation, there has only been seven women who have ever crossed this ocean solo. And I would have never believed that a refugee, a woman from Afghanistan, one who was extremely shy growing up, one who thought that I'm not going to do anything special in life, and probably the best life that I could have is to get married and have a family, would be the eighth woman to cross this ocean solo. And I share this with you all because the beauty of aviation is that when you set your heart to something in this very passionate field, it doesn't matter what your challenges or what your backgrounds are. Being in an aircraft will forever propel you forward. And that's the mentality that we all should have when we sit here and discuss the next generation. Nothing is impossible. And by working together and working in this very passionate field of aviation, we are always going to be moving forward. My message to the next generation is to be bold, be confident, and be creative. I started, my passion started in aviation by becoming, wanting to become an airline pilot. And I would have never expected for me to be the founder and president of a nonprofit organization and to fly solo around the world, all to inspire the next generation. Whatever your most wildest dreams are, go after them. And here's the great thing. There really is no age limit on when you can go after your dreams. And if you have a great mission to keep you energized and keep you motivated to cross these oceans, then you are going to set yourself up for a great flight pa path. Another message to the next generation is that if you just look at the airline industry, there are so many airliners taking off 
to go to a specific destination. And each airplane has a different flight path. When I say be bold, be confident, be creative, just know that there's more than one way to getting to your destination. I had initially started out with a, um, a flight plan for this trip around the world. And due to, like I said, weather delays, some changes in fuel availability, I had to alter my flight plan. And it was just so amazing to have ICAO, IATA, ACI, CANSO all working together to make sure that if there were any changes in the flight route, that it was OK, that it, we would all work together to ensure that the outreach events around the world would be as smooth as possible, along with my arrivals and departures to each country. So again, just highlighting, it was 30 stops. 22 countries across five continents, and I got to meet face-to-face 3,000 children uh, and, and sharing the message of STEM and aviation to these kids. But most importantly, we inspired hundreds of thousands through social media, uh, young children and adults all following the trip around the world. I really want to take this opportunity and thank everyone involved, um, especially the, the council members, the secretary general, uh, ICAO's president, and, and the staff for believing in a young girl who came here to her first NGAP meeting three years ago with a dream. And because everyone worked together, this dream grew and yes, it was a solo flight around the world, but this would not have been done without the team effort. Uh, it takes a village to raise a child, and it takes a village to get one person to go around the world. A special thank you to a great mentor, friend, and also advisory council member to DreamSoar, Captain Aisha Al-Hamali. She has been just such a great advocate, cheerleader, mentor, friend. She was texting me during the trip around the world, and uh, a lot of the success that we have today is shared uh, due to Aisha and just everyone here uh, at I ICAO. So thank you very much. Some lessons learned. The next generation is waiting for us. And it is so great to be here uh, at NGAP and exchanging these ideas and having this discussion. As someone who has just traveled the world and seen children face to face, they, we, they have, um, their, their ears are open, their eyes are open, and they want to learn more. And it's exciting to be a part of this summit and these conversations so that we can really better serve the next generation and ensure that we have a healthy foundation uh, to sustain this industry ahead of us. Borders, that's probably the second biggest lesson that I've learned, is when you are in the air, when I was flying around the world, I would see the borders of, of different countries on my GPS. And I'd look outside hoping that, or not hoping, but expecting to see maybe some sort of divide between two countries uh, as I was flying over them. And, and to my surprise, I realized there are no borders. Borders are man-made. And unfortunately, because of these man-made borders, there are children that go uneducated and children who don't have opportunities. It's best to look at ourselves as one. The world was, is one. We are all one. We all have the same mindsets, the same way of thinking. And we shouldn't distinguish ourselves so much from one another, because at the end of the day, we are all very much the same. I noticed this when I met the girls in Greece. They were no different from the girls in Afghanistan. And the girls from Afghanistan were no different from the girls in Indonesia. Human uh, race is human race. We are all the same. We do have our differences as far as the languages that we speak. But at the end of the day, we should embrace all being one. Um, and that was one of the biggest lessons that I learned is through the pilot's perspective, the world is one. There really are no borders unless you look down at your GPS that tells you uh, the divide in countries. And the last one is that teamwork makes the dream work. And it's amazing to see all of these different organizations here today working together. Um, 
I've, I, I understood this concept that teamwork is important, but sure enough, as I'm in Christmas Island, which is kind of an isolated island just south of Hawaii, where there's really no cell reception, and the power goes out every day from 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock, knowing that there was a team behind me working around the clock, um, it, was, it just gave me a better definition of what teamwork really meant. Again, a special thank you to ICAO and all of the participating civil, civil aviation authorities who stepped in and made each stop very uh, special. Phase two of DreamSoar, we would like to continue our outreach efforts. There are many countries that I wasn't able to go into, and I'm excited to, as we kick the next phase of DreamSoar is to not travel solo. It's so nice to have people travel with you. Uh, but the Dream Soar team hopes to continue our outreach efforts around the world to inspire the next generation through STEM. And I think that um, although it's not part of the global trip around the world, it's part of a global, er eff uh, global effort that we hope to continue. Dream Soar is launching a scholarship campaign so if you are following us on social media you'll, and our newsletters, you'll, you'll see that we are actively working very hard uh, to not only, now that we've inspired 3,000 kids and hundreds of thousands through social media and media, we want to now enable these kids and provide them opportunities regardless if you are a boy, a girl, your religion, what country you're from, your social background, any child in any part of the world can apply to these scholarships that will further their education in STEM and aviation. And then just for my personal note, going to Afghanistan and seeing all the young girls um, who were there and looking at me as a role model, I, it is my goal to go back and to start a STEM school in Afghanistan where young girls can come and work on STEM-related projects to better the country and to make them feel empowered and make them feel like they are a part of something uh, bigger. To conclude uh, my speech today, um, with the partnership of ICAO, uh, we were able to name the Beechcraft Bonanza that I flew around the world. And I think this is a, a good opportunity to reveal the name if you all don't know of it yet, but it's Dreamcatcher. And uh, I think this aircraft that, has, that I have flown around the world with uh, although it's a piece of machinery, to me it's very sentimental and I, I felt like as I was going around the world, um, it was a way of catching people's dreams and attention and that's uh, the official name, which we had a competition going. Uh, it was a, a young girl from India who selected the name and we uh, all voted on it and came up with uh, the name Dreamcatcher. So again, thank you all for your, your attention. Thank you all for your participation. It is wonderful to be back here in, at uh, ICAO's headquarters and just really celebrating um, not only the next generation, but all of the hard work we all put in to make DreamSource so successful. If you want to learn more about the DreamSource flight, it's not every day you get to see yourself on the cover of a magazine, but uh, the ICAO training report, there's an article uh, that I help write that just kind of highlights the trip, and you can learn more online um, through dreamsword.org. So thank you all again. Thank you so much, Shasta. That was a, a very, very inspiring presentation. We take a few messages from what you were saying. Be bold, be confident, be creative. And this applies to everyone. Plans can change. What is important is reaching your destination. Borders do not exist. They are man-made. We are one. And teamwork makes the dream work. So again, thank you so much. If we're looking for a cause to support, this is it. Thank you again for being such an extraordinary ambassador for the new, the next generation of aviation professionals. Thank you and bon voyage. I'm sure Shasta will be at the coffee break yes. to uh, chat with 